Uh, thank, you for, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. And first of all, I'd like to thank the organizer for having this uh, school and workshop. I'm very happy to be involved in this activity. So today I'm going to talk about the uh, kind of theoretical attempt to understand self-replication from physical and chemical viewpoint. So as you know, uh, self-replication is the unique property of living system. Then actually, I think one ultimate goal of biophysics is to uh, review the property that can differentiate living and also non-living systems. Then actually, we already know that living system uh, should be a non-equilibrium and open system. This is why we are studying stochastic thermodynamics and non-equilibrium physics in this school. But this is not the sufficient condition, I think. Um, living system should, I think, have the ability to replicate itself. More specifically, so living system should have a compartmentation that uh, differentiate the system from the environment, so this is very important. And also, uh, this compartment, I will call it volume or cell, and should double the ingredient in it, and also uh, double itself in size to have the replication like this. So, um, so we here focus on how we can represent the self-replication from a uh, physical and chemical viewpoint. And actually, in history, we have, um, yes, we have long history to investigate necessary and sufficient condition for self-replication or self-fabrication. The most famous one is here, done by von Neumann in 1940. He used the uh, mathematical logic and also uh, cellular automaton to uh, consider this problem, then actually he, um, he proposed a set of the system uh, that is sufficient logically uh, to do self-fabrication. The important point is that so this system uh, contain the so-called universal uh, construct that can work like the ribosome. So this is a system, so this is a system can create other system uh, based on the so-called descriptor that correspond to the DNA in the actual biological system. So, and this, this was amazing that he proposed this kind of things um, ahead of the discovery of their uh, biological counterparts, so ribosome DNA or other things, uh, about 10 years. However, so um, this is yeah, his, his argument is based on, as I said, cellular automaton, and so this is a very specific uh, setting. So from a physical uh, viewpoint, and also when, if we consider, the un we want to understand the biological self-replication, so uh, his argument uh, has some factors, uh, missing factors or implicit factors. And actually, the kind of old catalytic idea of uh, uh, old catalytic cycle exists in this argument, but um, what are missing, uh, uh, what are missing is one of them is the kind of metabolism. In other words, energetics. He did not consider any energetics because cellular automaton does not require any uh, physical uh, energy. Uh, in its theory, so it's, it's a kind of logical thing. And also um, membrane or the kind of uh, the, the compartmentation were not so explicitly uh, considered in his argument. So this is very important that we already know. So, we, so the cell should have certain kind of compartmentation by this kind of membrane. So he did not uh, consider that explicitly because we have in the cellular automaton, we have the two dimensional space of the, the memory then, so, so we can automatically uh, assign the, the system on it uh, without considering the membrane explicitly. 
And also, therefore, the expansion of the space, the volume, also uh, was not considered. Actually, we have other factors, uh, missing factor from virus got viewpoint, but so we focus on uh, so these three in this work specifically. And also we have other attempt to understand self-replication or kind of evolution uh, from, his, uh, from physical and chemical viewpoint. So this kind of attempt, as, of, as far as I know, can date back to the work by um, Alfred Lotoka. He uh, proposed the physical biology and also investigated energetics of evolution. And after that, so we have the hypercycle by Egan, also the old catalytic set by Kaufman. And very recently, we have a uh, renewed attention to this kind of, of topic uh, due to the rediscovery of the so-called bacterial growth uh, law uh, in 2010 by uh, uh, Scott and, and Fuhr. So actually, this uh, bacterial growth law, law was originally uh, reviewed in 1950, but so he, he, they uh, clarified it uh, more uh, by using more sophisticated uh, way. And so motivated by that kind of uh, experimental observation, so many uh, physicists and uh, theoretician now uh, makes a, a kind of self-replicating reaction system uh, looks like this. However, most of this work focus on the old catalytic cycle mainly. So, and the, the problem of compartmentation or space uh, is mainly ignored. So as long as I know, we have almost no theory for the thermodynamics considering both the reaction and also the change of the size of the system. And if you, if you know that, so please let me, let me know. I'm, I'm very happy to uh, know ki that kind of activity. So I don't know why, but uh, one possible reason is that, so a conventional theory of chemical reaction presumed that the volume, reaction volume is constant by, by assuming the existence of non-reactive solvent or something like that. So if the, the system, the volume of system is constant, even if we have old catalytic uh, reaction and molecule in it, then first, um, so this reaction proceed. But eventually, so the, the volume will be occupied by this molecule, then so reverse reaction should be dominated and therefore this reaction will stop at a certain point by the reverse reaction or degradation of the molecule or something like that. And we can um, avoid this kind of situation by, for example, pumping out the new uh, molecule from this system. But so this is the thermodynamics of chemostat. It's not the thermodynamics of uh, self-replication in which the system should expand spontaneously uh, in response to the change of the molecule in it. So therefore we have to have a theory that can uh, address the thermodynamic coordination of reaction of, of the volume and also the growth of the volume itself. So this is what we tried in, 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 in this uh, recent paper we, we published. So in this uh, theory, uh, in this paper, specifically we obtained the thermodynamic condition for steady growth uh, realized. And also we clarified that so thermodynamic, uh, steady growth state is thermodynamically uh, constrained a lot. So we have, so any kind of steady growth state uh, is not possible. So we have the actual constraint from thermodynamics. And also we derived a uh, representation of thermodynamic costs, uh, meaning that entropy production rate, heat dissipation, and the chemical work associated with this uh, steady growth state. 
So this theory I am going to uh, show you uh, soon uh, is based on the macroscopic thermodynamics. The usual thermodynamics you are taught in the undergraduate uh, course. And therefore, no stochastic thermodynamics is required and no kinetic detail uh, assumed. And so this is based purely on the second row of thermodynamics as, as, as I'm going to show you. Okay. And actually this uh, work was led by uh, my two collaborators, uh, Yuki Sugiyama and Atsushi Kamimura. They are working as the assistant professor in, in, in my lab. They are there. So this is the excellent work by them. Okay. Um, let, let me move on to the setup we have. So we consider the system. So omega is the volume of the system that is variable. So then, so we, we consider the case that the pressure, external pressure to the system is constant. And so we have uh, two types of molecule in the system. The blue one are called uh, constrained chemical that are constrained inside of the system. And the red ones are so-called open chemical that can diffuse across the, uh, across this membrane or barrier uh, between the system and the environment. As I said, volume is variable. The system of the volume is variable. And so uh, an example, this is just an example uh, of the blue and the red molecule, uh, something like this. So A1 uh, and B1 uh, react to generate two A2. So uh, therefore, uh, B1 is a kind of a resource to generate to uh, A2, uh, A2 from A1. Then, so A2 um, break down to one A1 and one B2. So B2 is a kind of waste. And this waste and the uh, resource uh, can diffuse uh, across, the, across this boundary. And so A1 and A2 form the autocatalytic cycle here. So we consider that so the intensive variable of the bus is the temperature, the temperature kept constant, the pressure is kept constant, and also the chemical potential of this open uh, chemical in the environment uh, are kept constant. So actually, uh, physically more correct picture of our model is something like that, like this. So here we have a rigid uh, wall here, and this is a system we have. And here we have a semi-permeable and movable uh, barrier. So the red one can uh, diffuse across this barrier, but blue one cannot. So this is a more physically feasible uh, picture that we are working on. So from the thermodynamics, so we uh, assume that there is a uh, entropy function of the total system. And to so this uh, entropy function is the sum of the entropy of the system and also the bus. So what the second row of thermodynamics tell us is that the system can evolve to increase this total entropy. That is uh, thermodynamically allowed. Therefore, what we have to do is to know when the total entropy increases as the number of blue molecule and the volume uh, goes to infinity. So, so this kind of so this is a kind of uh, expansion forever in 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 the in, so in in the number of molecule and also number uh, size of the volume. Therefore, we want to know that this kind of behavior is allowed thermodynamically. So this is, so specifically this corresponds to this kind of picture. So this is a space of the X and this is the total entropy. If uh, entropy looks like this, unbounded towards this direction, towards X, the capital X is infinity, then the steady growth state can can be possible thermodynamically. So um, to derive that conditions first, so we uh, convert the total entropy, uh, we introduce the entropy density. I, I just 
divide uh, entropy of the system by the volume and here. And small x is the concentration of molecule. Capital X is the number of molecule in the system. So they are different. And also small n is the concentration of open uh, chemicals. Uh, from the extensivity of the entropy function, then so we can uh, represent uh, the entropy by using the entropy density times the volume like this. And here, for simplicity, simplicity, we assume that that this reaction inside it is the slowest in time scale. Therefore, we consider that the so energy flux uh, between the system and the environment is much faster. And also diffusion of open chemicals later on are much faster than the reaction here. So therefore we can treat them as in, treat them in a quasi uh, equilibrium uh, state situation. So for such a case, so it is convenient to introduce the Legendre transformation of this entropy function. So this is a, this uh, phi is the uh, Legendre transformation of entropy density with respect to energy flux and also this uh, open uh, chemical. And this, this is a function of the concentration of gluon, the molecule in the system. And also, uh, we, we extensively use its Legendre transformation, uh, that is uh, phi stir. So now, uh, this is a function of the chemical potential of blue uh, molecule here. So the point is that, so this uh, function is, uh, can be interpreted as the internal pressure of the system if the, these molecules has the, has the chemical potential mu. Uh, under the condition that the volume is constant. This is very important. So we're gonna think about the volume is variable, but so uh, this is the pressure when the uh, volume is kept constant. Anyway, and okay, and then I uh, introduce a second assumption. Uh, this is kind of equilibrium assumption. We assume that system uh, this system converges to equilibrium state uh, uh, x e q if we keep the volume constant. So this is a kind of um, a virtual uh, situation in, in our system because we consider the volume is variable. But if we uh, keep uh, uh, keep the volume constant, then the system should go to the equilibrium state. So this is because we want to exclude the occurrence of the usual non-equilibrium steady state. That makes the theory much, much more complicated and inaccessible. So this is for, for, for that case. But the point is that transient non-equilibrium state is allowed, even under this condition. And also this uh, equilibrium state is determined by the chemical potential and the temperature in the environment. Uh, and also the, uh, yeah, uh, the chemical potential of open chemical and the temperature. Okay. And um, as I say, the volume is variable. And so under that uh, condition, so the diffusion of the open chemical is very fast. Therefore, um, if we fixed the amount of the constrained molecule, blue one, then so we can obtain the volume uh, in this state by solving this minimization problem. So this is, so this part is just entropy uh, as a function of the volume and uh, capital X. And so we now uh, fix the um, pressure to this value. Therefore, this is just a Legendre transformation. And so um, the omega should be, uh, should be the minimum of this. And because, so therefore, uh, omega uh, volume is a, a function of the number of molecule. And also, uh, because of that, so concentration of molecule is nonlinear function of the number of molecule. So usually this is fixed, this is constant, but so now this is, the, this is a function of capital X, therefore the concentration of molecule is, will be nonlinear function of capital X. By introducing this quantity, so we can rewrite the total entropy as a function of capital X like this after some uh, computation. 
So here we have the volume, and here we have the bar uh, star. Uh, this is the uh, internal pressure of the system if the system in the chemical equilibrium. But this is the case when we consider the isobaric uh, situation. So, and, so this is a, a external pressure. Therefore, this is a kind of difference between the internal pressure at equilibrium and also the external pressure. So here we have the Bregman divergence. Bregman divergence is a generalization of Kalbach rival divergence for convex function. Here we use the uh, phi star for the convex function. And so this is a Bregman divergence between the chemical potential at equilibrium and also the chemical potential at current state. So I'm going to uh, explain the physical intuition of this, uh, this relation, but so we can uh, obtain uh, this. So our first result is that by using this representation, we could prove that the state of the system can be categorized into three cases. One is that, so this, this part is positive. In this case, the system eventually grow forever, so meaning that the time derivative of volume is positive. If this term, this two term, is the same, so this is equal, then the system eventually uh, equilibrate. So uh, eventually the time derivative of volume becomes zero. And finally, if this is negative, then the system eventually shrinks. So, for these three cases, the entropy function, the shape of entropy function looks like this uh, as a function of capital X. So in this case, so we have unbounded uh, entropy function towards the X is infinity. So in the second case, we have, so this dashed line is the maximum of the entropy function. Therefore, starting from a certain point, then system eventually goes to uh, uh, any point on this uh, dashed line. So this is the equilibrium uh, state. Then finally, uh, in the last case, so entropy function, function looks like this, it's maximum locate at the origin of x. Therefore, the system uh, evolve to, to shrink to the zero. So this is the very general uh, consequence uh, from this uh, representation. So the next, what is the meaning of this uh, quantity? So I will, I'm going to give you a, a physical intuition behind it. So let's first consider iso so isochoric case, such that uh, uh, volume is kept constant. In this case, uh, the pressure, external pressure is variable to keep the volume constant. So in this case, at certain uh, state, so we have uh, chemical potential, uh, corresponding to this chemical potential, we have internal pressure that is obtained by the buster. So this system uh, chemically uh, tend to uh, relax to the equilibrium state, uh, mu uh, eq. At this point also we can evaluate the pressure. Usually these pressure, two pressures are different, but if the volume is kept constant, this internal pressure automatically balances with the external pressure from the wall. Therefore, there is no problem to relax to this state. However, we consider the isobaric case where the uh, volume is variable and the external pressure is constant. Therefore, um, if we are at a certain point, then uh, we can evaluate the internal pressure. And this internal pressure should be the same, uh, should be balanced to the external pressure that was specified by the bath. If this equilibrium, chemical equilibrium state does not have, have the um, internal pressure, uh, so this internal pressure is usually different from the external pressure from the bath. In that case, this, uh, so the system cannot relax to this state. Eventually, the system goes to infinity or uh, goes to uh, shrink to zero. So this is a mechanism when we consider the uh, variable uh, volume. So 
Um, so this is the second result we have. So let's consider the expanding case. So the system uh, expand forever. So so we and so we can expect that in that case. So the concentration of the the molecule will converges to a certain point. So actually, the number of molecule converges to infinity. The the volume also converges uh, converges uh, uh, expand to infinity. Then, but there we can expect that their uh, ratio uh, converges to certain finite uh, concentration. So we call it uh, uh, steady growth state concentration. And so this concentration should satisfy this inequality. So this term um, came from so this part. So we just plugged uh, x e, uh, x, uh, sg here. Then, so, so we have this one. So this should be uh, positive in the case of steady growth state. So this inequality can be decomposed into the two conditions. One is from the constant pressure. So external pressure should be always balanced with the internal pressure. So therefore, so this is this defined accessible uh, state. Uh, this is this is a, this is this one. So this is an example. Uh, so accessible uh, state under this uh, external pressure, and also this z determine the region where the entropy production is positive. This is from the second law of thermodynamics, and so this z region is uh, shown in red. Therefore, a uh, steady growth uh, state, the chemical potential at this point, should be constrained only on, on, on this line. So on this I and also within this red region. So this is very strict constraint that can be accessible and in the steady growth state. So this is our, our uh, second result. If um, the system is in the equilibrium case, then so this intersection, so intersection of this and this uh, is unique, uh, only one point, where so we have the equilibrium uh, state. So in the shrinking case, they are not uh, in, uh, intersecting. So this is the second result. And then so from the representation of the total entropy, we can obtain the thermodynamic cost for this steady growth state. So this is a representation of the steady entropy production rate. So that, that should look like this. And by using this, we can evaluate growth efficiency like this. So this is the entropy production rate is divided by the rate of volume expansion. So the right hand side uh, is always uh, positive here. And the point is that so if this right hand side is close to zero, the efficiency is maximum because uh, we can expand the volume uh, very much. Uh, uh, for uh, unit uh, entropy production, so this uh, so this term becomes zero, mean that so the system is in equilibrium. Therefore, uh, maximum growth efficiency is achieved at the near equilibrium. And finally, so we can obtain the heat dissipation representation. So this is a heat heat, and and also we can um, yeah obtain the chemical and the mechanical work. So this is total work, and this is chemical work part, and this is mechanical work part. And so this is very um, reasonable because here this is external pressure, and this is expansion of the volume. Therefore, so this is a mechanical actually work that the system uh, does to the environment. OK, um, that's all of we derive in, in our work. So let me uh, discuss a bit uh, what are missing in our theory and what we have to do in, in, in the future. Then actually, so we assume that autocatalytic reaction is the slowest. So this means that the autocatalytic uh, thing is the, the limiting uh, step uh, in, in the system. However, uh, it could happen that diffusion or volume expansion is the slowest when the 
if we think about real biological system, so real biological system, we have transportation system. Is transportation between the system and the environment is very slow, then so diffusion uh, or um, volume expansion would be the late limiting. In that case, we have to consider that situation uh, by, by, by switching the, the, react, the role of reaction and also diffusion in our framework. And also, uh, in our theory, we consider, we assume that the external pressure is constant. This means that the tension of the membrane uh, is constant, irrespective of the size of volume. This is unreal, sound unrealistic uh, if we consider actual uh, biological cell like this. And so, yes, uh, tension is generally a function of volume. And also the size of the volume of a cell uh, usually changes by the synthesis reaction of the membrane. So in this case, we have to consider coupled some dynamic system uh, that involves self-replication and also the generation of the membrane or, and also the, that, that expansion or shrink, uh, shrink or something like that. So this, these are um, what we have to do. Uh, in the next case. And finally, so in the second assumption, we excluded the possibility of non usual non-equilibrium steady state. Actually, uh, non-equilibrium uh, steady growth state, uh, that origin is the extensivity of entropy function. So if the uh, concentration is uh, the same, then so from the extensivity, so we have, so these two are the same. So this extensivity is the origin of the uh, uh, kind of eternal expansion. So, but the usual uh, non-equilibrium steady state uh, come from the kind of uh, cyclic flux. So we have to combine them. So, so that, uh, to do that, so we need uh, new types of non-equilibrium chemical reaction theory that can handle both usual uh, non-equilibrium steady state and also this kind of uh, volume change. Um, actually, so we are uh, very much interested in that kind of extension. Uh, to this end, so what we are now thinking is that the geometry behind some dynamics is very important, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm from applied mathematics. So for me, so, so this time, so I learned a lot uh, about uh, some dynamics from my collaborator. My collaborator is a specialist of some dynamics. And so to me, the equilibrium and also non-equilibrium thermodynamics uh, are largely uh, related to the convex optimization problem with complex uh, constraints, mathematically. Uh, actually, in our case, so we consider the dual space of the extensive variable concentration and also chemical uh, potential. So th this dual uh, relation is the, induced by the gender transformation of thermodynamic function Phi, so this is convex function. And from that, so difference of total entropy can be described very generally uh, by the Bregman divergence. Actually, so we are in, in another work here, we are working on extending this kind of picture to non-equilibrium situation. So in which we consider another dual uh, relation between thermodynamic force and thermodynamic flux. So now, so we have the dissipation, the on surface dissipation function. So this dissipation function induced the Lugendo duality between F and the and F force and the flux. And in non equilibrium uh, system, so these two uh, things, so this is equilibrium uh, uh, sum dynamics and this is non equilibrium sum dynamics. They are linked by very fundamental equation of continuity equation and also gradient equation. So in order to understand this kind of complicated structure, it is fundamental to use the word of geometry. And then actually this is a geometry. So what we need is a geometry of convex function and the Legendre duality. That is uh, the information geometry some of you know about it. So, um, so this is very uh, useful uh, to understand this kind of structure. If you are interested in, in this kind of thing, so please take a look at uh, 
our other paper we published in, in, in uh, very recently. Okay, um, I'd like to thank my uh, collaborator and also funding agency. Thank you for your kind attention. The um, extensivity that you're assuming, right? Yes. Um, in thermodynamics and statistical physics, we usually get that from uh, assuming that boundary terms are being neglected. Right? Uh, could you say the last part again? The, convex the convexity that we get, or the extensivity that we use mm -hmm. in statistical physics is basically because of neglecting boundary terms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the reason why thermodynamic quantities are extensive. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the crucial thing I always thought in self-replication, and this has always been a conceptual problem for me as to how to actually mathematically model replication, mm -hmm. is that there's a discrete event when a cell closes off from its daughter. Right. All and, right. And there's an information content to this because there actually has to be information on both sides of this barrier being, you know, shutting. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm, yes. And this, um, I, I've never been able to disentangle how one could talk about um, entropy and thermodynamics without disentangling this you know, absolutely essential information partitioning. Okay, okay. Right? Because there is information that is being put in that roughly half the contents, especially the replicating part mm. of the cell contents, have to be roughly equally distributed over all the parts. Hmm. But if the system is uniform, sufficiently then there's, so the, there's, there's no living system that can be uniform because there is a specific quantity that is carrying yeah. the information that uh, allows like, like dna or something like yeah what you mean ah, okay yes mm. so there's a very specific um how should i say obstruction to extensivity you know what I'm saying. Yes, I I'm understand sure what you're about this Because this is kind of the first thing that hits you in the face if you try to model replication is that irreversible thing of the membrane contracting, right? Mm. Yeah, actually, so, um, so our salary is not enough to, uh, obviously, our salary ignore that kind of uh, problem. So we, we just focus on how the uh, volume can expand, uh, but that's a, that is necessary condition to realize the self-replication. So yes, I am really very much interested in your point. So, but um, that kind of thing, so we have to have the kind of stochastic sum that we need, we need because the, the we have discrete number of molecules. Uh, so this this work is based on the macroscopic sum dynamics. Therefore, we need to have yes, no, no, but I very think very. They have to be yes. Mm. Here's a wild conjecture that in your steady state growth condition, at some point you get to a metastable state. In other words, your Legendre function is it's no longer convex. Okay, yes. And mm. that's when you have to, the metastable state collapses to two mm. separate mm. replicates. Yes. So that's the way I would envisage your beautiful growth thermodynamics of interfacing with replication. Yeah, I'm very curious about that kind of, yes, sorry. Maybe I think the good um, toy model is kind of self uh, yeah, self spontaneous dividing uh, prot cell or membrane. So some experimentalists find that kind of reaction. Therefore, yeah, it would be nice to play with that kind of very basic physical model, yeah, to answer that, yes. 
I'm very much interested in that. More questions? Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker again.